Hey kids, it's Dressa James, and I'm Dressa James Plains looking at Dryptosaurus, another animal that people were like, is this real? Yes, it is. This is one, okay, so first of all, I'm going to calm down, because this is not the most accurate depiction of this animal, but it's the only depiction of this animal. So it's one of those dinosaurs that I know about, and I never bring up, because no one seems to care, but the idea is that Dryptosaurus, well, let me start, okay, so uh, it was discovered on the Jersey Shore, it was from Jersey, not, the actual, sorry, the actual Jersey Shore, I'm getting, doing characters, and uh, it's one of the first thoropods to be known from North America, and they had, in thoropod meaning meat, predatory meaning dinosaurs usually, and so up until this point of its discovery, you know, they found Megalosaurus in Europe, all right, and named it, and they thought it was a quadruped, they were on all four. So this is the first dinosaur we found, like, okay, this is on two legs. This is something, some kind of predator, right? And so, um, let me go ahead and open it now. So this is, there we go. So same rules we're going to cut here. Okay, there. And it just pops right out. Interesting. The tail still on the inside, so I have to go in under the plastic. go. Always receive your sword. Now, let's, so the tail has the same kind of like plug-in as all, they all have. Just put it in like that. That's kind of a neat looking tail. So first and foremost, I'm going to point out with this guy is that, uh, who, who is he? It was thought to be a megalosaur, thought to be a solarosaur. It's one of those animals that was discovered and it was so fragmentary that they weren't sure and they're still kind of not sure which family to put it in. Uh, as of right now, it's, it's kind of near the Tyrannosaurus. So first and foremost, you've already seen this animal in your experience if you are into paleontology and look at books. The idea is there's a picture that's really popular of a meat eating dinosaur laying on its back and another one jumping in the air over it by Charles R. Knight. Now Charles R. Knight is, a, is an amazing paleo artist and the, the way he depicted it was this, the, this very active animal. And the big deal with that is this is like in the 1800s where people are thinking of dinosaurs as big lumbering beasts. And he's like, what about this image of one jumping in the air and jumping down? And everyone's like, no, nah, that's not that's not right. So we, we see it nowadays, and it's like, well, of course, of course they're fat. But back then, that was like heresy almost. It was like, they're reptiles, they're slow. So that's why it's such an important animal. And that's why you've already seen this. And if you haven't looked it up, type in, I mean, don't, well, after the video's over, type in Charles R. Knight. And it's called, it's called the, the, the picture's called Leaping Lalax, because in 1866, when Cope, yes, the Cope of Cope and Marsh, as in the Bone Wars, uh, he first described it with that name. Um, Marsh in 7, 1877 came around and said, actually, the name you gave it, Lalax, belongs to another, like a mite. So he, in, in the rule of, of zoology and, and uh, nomenclature names, is that uh, every name for an animal, a genus, should be like unique for its species. So the idea is that when, when Cope named it Lalax, he's like, here's this new name. And then... Uh, Marsh was like, actually, it turns out that Lalax is a mite that's already been named, so that name is not good for this dinosaur. So he renamed it Tryptosaurus uh, because of his claws, like big, big clawed hands. And Cope had known that Marsh renamed it, but just didn't accept it. And so he would find other specimen that may have been Allosaurus later on, and just go, yeah, this is a part of my my Lalax genus. Uh, obviously, we all look at Tryptosaurus now. Lalax is no longer a valid genus. But anyway, so it's known for his big claws in his hands, so it's thought to be a Tyrannosaur, and the first thing you're thinking is, wait a minute, Jurassic James, Tyrannosaurs have two fingers, and that is true in the late Cretaceous period. Now, mostly. On that same note, um, Tyrannosaurus rex, you know, Jurassic World, Jurassic World Rexy, you know, the other two, you have an Arbortosaurus from Canada with two, Tarbosaurus from Mongolia with two, so you're like, yeah, Tyrannosaurs all have two fingers. But then we see this guy here, and it's from 67 million years ago, roughly. So it's the same time as T-Rex itself, properly. And it has maybe three fingers. Well, here's the thing. Since I was a kid, back in my day, that was just to look at Tyrannosaurs. Now we're looking at Tyrannosaurs and saying, actually, there's more to it than we think. And there's other branches of Tyrannosaur, if not direct ancestor or uncle tree or aunt tree. You know how you have your uncles and your aunts, so like, they're like your parents, siblings. In the family tree of life, there's these groups, like, for example, horseshoe crabs. I would say they're the uncles of trilobites. Horseshoe crabs didn't evolve in the trilobites. They share a common ancestor, but they're a different branch. 
Well, in a Tyrannosaur group, we know the big, robust Tyrannosaurs are like Cretaceous, but there's another group of Tyrannosaurs that people don't really know about, uh, the public doesn't really know about. And for example, you may have heard of some of the names, but not quite knew what it meant. So we have, in China, we have Guanlong, and, oh, sorry, this is a two, oh, my goodness, this is a tiny little belly. It's a 2000 and a flight down, no, 2000, I can't see that. I'm getting old. 2010, <laughs> Guanlong from Safari. I think it's the only Guanlong I can find out there. Uh, there's a, from, this is China, this is also China, uh, D Long from 2005 Safari. This is a U Tyrannus, which is 2015 Safari. These are all Tyrannosaurid cousins, ancestors. I mean, people are debating on how they're really related to each other, but they're Tyrannosaur relatives, right? Uh, they're not to scale. Well, these two are pretty small, but compared to the other guys. And then there's one called Protoceratosaurus. Now, Protoceratosaurus name is really annoying because when it was first found in England in the mid Jurassic, it was thought to be an early member of the Ceratosaur family. You go to North America in the Jurassic period and you see Ceratosaurus with his known horn because the name Ceratosaurus means nose horn. I've done two videos about this already. And you see this little nose horn here and go, ah, there it goes, the early Ceratosaurus. But that was actually wrong. And it turns out it's actually a Tyrannosaur relative. And this is a Jurassic World figure, so like, remember that. So the idea is that these guys are all Tyrannosaurus. It's a very diverse branch. My example to you is think about how in Panthera we have there are tigers, but there are lions, they're really big cats. We also have leopards and, and uh, snow leopards. Uh, so those are all different varieties of the same shape. A little more complex, a little more time, but that's what you're seeing happening here. Now, with that being said, we're going to move our Tyrannosaurus over, and we're going to talk about this guy himself. Now, unfortunately, to this day, there is a very fragmented specimen. There's only a few bones in open animal. So we can, I can't sit here and tell you that, yeah, it had these tails, spines, and all the... There's nobody knowing that, so I think the the artist here who created this figure took liberties. Um, some people look at it and it reminds them. I've been told of the Mega Raptor, which I did a video about last month. And so, uh, interesting enough, Mega Raptor is considered to be a possible transfer relative, but that's still being debated. But the idea is that this guy also is compared to the uh, Indoraptor, which I think is an abomination. I know many of you, especially kids, like. The, the not mutants, the hybrids of Jurassic World. Um, my feelings towards hybrids shouldn't affect your feelings towards hybrids, but I, I think they're like a waste of material because we have a lot of real dinosaurs that really existed that we can really study and learn about. And I'd rather just take a real species and give it weird powers like a neck frill and venom than make a whole new species out of nothing because then I have to tell children in my camp and classes that's how that interactor isn't real. And they're like, what do you mean it's not real? I'm like, it does never exist. I'm like, but where is it? I'm like, it doesn't exist. And I'm like, but where is it? See, it doesn't exist. And they go, but where is it? You see, see the pattern here? Um, so the idea is that Dryptosaurus itself, it's a, it's a long arm, possibly three fingered Tyrannosaurid. Um, and again, it's it's something that's interesting. And like I said, it's one of those things where it's annoying because I want to know more, but we only have so many parts to it. So the Jersey State Museum for the fee skeleton of it, but we need to find more of them to, to understand how they fit because, and here's the last cool part, that 67 million years ago, North America, the ocean, there was an ocean called the Grand, well, there's multiple names. One of them names is the Zuni Sea, but the name you all will hear about mostly is called the Great Western Interior Seaway, where North America was cut into by an ocean uh, from like 80 to, to about 70 million years ago. The ocean began to drain out by that point uh, as the Rocky Mountain system began to uplift, but... At that same time, in the for you, this is west for you. On the same time that T. Rex, Triceratops, and Ankylosaurus were walking on the land and Quetzalcoatlus in the sky, Dryptosaurus was on the east coast of North America. So, unfortunately, there are not a lot of dinosaurs known from that time and location. Well, from that time, yes, we have the Hell Creek formation, but as far as look for the eastern coast, it's not very much known. I mean, there's a dinosaur called Apalachos, a Tyrannosaur named Apalachosaurus that. No one does exist. And I encourage you to look it up after this. But the idea is that this is another environment that's so close yet so far. So that's why I was super excited. Even though it's not a super accurate representation, I'm excited because it's a representation of this animal and that might encourage other toy makers to make more of these things, uh, more accurate versions of these things to talk about. So that's why when I see it, I'm really excited and I hope you get one too. And you might want to just buy two because have one on the ground and one in the air. Like the, just look up the Charles, Charles L. Knight. It's a really, really cool picture. And it's in all the old textbooks 
Uh, do, do we still have textbooks? Do kids still? Anyway, um, that Stryptosaurus. Oh, right. Uh, as far as this figure goes, let's see. It's there's a DNA code that's so important to this, the, the, this line. This one, the tail is, can rotate, and but this one. So you turn this little area here and sideways. Which, is, which I get it. They're they're making like five of these a season, <laughs> so they also have kind of a new gimmick. So now it's a hit side to side. Um, the, jaw, the jaw opens and it does it. That's neat. Anyway, so this guy would have lived near Hadrosaurus and probably uh, uh, Notosaurus. So Notosaurus are the Ankylosaur groups, but they're the ones without the club in their tail. And Hadrosaurus are what called duck bills commonly. So that's what would have probably been its main diet uh, as a Tyrannosaur. They love Duckbills and Hornadosaurus. They evolve, they co evolve basically. But anyway, that is Dryptosaurus. So it is a real dinosaur. I dress the James approved. It, it really exists. But uh, uh, it's a neat model. And like I said, I hope to do a part two when they have, when more models come out of this of this animal from like Safari or Papa or Schlee or whatever. I'm guessing they probably didn't make models because this is a. Not, it's not dubious. It's a, it's a dubious in, in paleontology. It's like. There's a genus that its name is out there and no one really believes it's really a real thing. There's the bones maybe from other animals. It's not dubious. It's just that it's such a fragmented known specimen or species or genre that um, I'm guessing the big toy companies don't want to make that because it's like, well, it's, we don't know what it'll look like in a year. Um, but I hope they do. So that being said, I'll see you guys later.